you know what's the biggest goal in life? Going into your office chair, if you're somebody who works in an office setting, going to your place of employment, whether you're bagging groceries or flipping burgers or sitting in your bedroom making YouTube videos like I am, imagine going to your work and only working for 16 minutes and getting paid $1.25 million. Yaroslav Halak, baby. Jim Benning came out here with a gift for the man right here. Because 16 minutes is all it took for Yaroslav Halak to go out there and get a $1.25 million signing bonus that was triggered because he had played his 10th game on the year. Now, if you do the math on that, hey, 1.25 divided by 16 multiplied out by 60, he's on pace for 4.68 million bucks an hour based off of the pay rate that he got from tonight's game against the Islanders. Now, I don't know if this was some sort of deja vu thing, like, oh, Yaroslav Halak was a great goaltender for the Islanders for the good chunk of the 2010s, and, like, he kind of forgot he was playing on a different team. Now, I don't know. But Yaroslav Halak goes out there and delivers probably what is one of the worst goaltender performances we have seen in years for the Vancouver Canucks. Like, I never, I try not to be at least, okay, maybe never is not the right way to put it. I try not to be the guy that goes out there and blames the goalies for losses. I try to give the benefit of the doubt, okay, What's going on with this defense? Why is there a guy out on the side that is not getting his check? How did that pass go through? I ask myself, why do these goals go in? And I'm usually pretty good at finding reasons as to why these goals went in that were not the goalie's fault. Unfortunately, it's difficult to continue with that process when a goaltender allows five goals in the first period. He gets pulled subsequently, and the Canucks try to mount a comeback, but they end up not doing it. They fail because there is a sixth goal scored on Thatcher Demko, but nevertheless, let's go over the Canucks versus Islanders game right here. It kicks off in the first four minutes of the game as Zach Parise at 325, Brock Nelson at 343, and Anders Lee at 356 come in here with three goals in 31 seconds! Ay ay ay! When was the last time the Canucks let up three goals in 31 seconds? I'm not really too sure. Unfortunately, this sequence of goal scoring was not a record for the Islanders, and I think it was Shorthouse on the broadcast who said that the fastest Islanders three goal stint was like 28 seconds or something like that, so the Vancouver Canucks are not in the history books in that particular aspect, but still, it's not something you like to see. The Canucks use their timeout. Eventually, the next few minutes go on in the period, and then Casey Sezikis scores... Oh boy, it's 4 nothing. Yaroslav Halak, man. I know it's tough to say this one's the goalie's fault because it goes in off of Sezikis' skate and in, but like, still, that doesn't make it feel any better. It's still 4 nothing, and then you give it a few more minutes and then it's 5 nothing because Matthew Barzal comes in all alone and the Vancouver Canucks are pinching a little bit too hard. Barzal deeks to the backhand and, you know, it goes right in or forehand or whatever it was. I don't really remember, but... Yaroslav Halak lets in five goals on 12 shots, and that is a good enough performance to get him pulled. He's got a 5-8-3 save percentage on the night, and he plays 16 minutes and 19 seconds of ice time. There you go. There's the $1.25 million signing bonus that is paid out to him that he has earned because he has played his 10th game on the year. Ay ay ay. Now, the Vancouver Canucks, to their credit, they made things interesting. It was Oliver ekman Larson at the end of the first period who just took the puck and whacked it towards the goal. It goes right in. It's 5-1. to one, And that was the start of something special in this game, I want to say. Because the Vancouver Canucks, throughout since towards the end of the first and throughout the second mostly, they started to get some mojo on. Thatcher Demko came out after the fifth New York goal, so he was in for the remainder of the game. But the Vancouver Canucks, with some support from Demko, making a few 2 on 0 breakaway saves and all that, the team went out there and they absolutely started dominating. The Petey, Pod, and Hoaglander line goes out there with a few great shifts. Connor Garland has himself one shift towards the end of the second period, where he's absolutely dangling by guys, slipping through the cracks, and... 
kind of slippery, sliding himself along the wall. It's so weird just seeing the Canucks take complete control in a game where they're down 5-1, 5-2, 5-3, and the fans in the building feel it. I feel it sitting on my couch at home. The Canucks, they might win this game. The second period sees itself two goals here. The first one is Elias Pettersson from Vasily Podkols, and there was an OEL assist on this one that was taken away. But Petey in the corner, he comes out and he scores the goal that I always score in NHL 22. If you watch my videos, you've seen this goal scored a million times before, where Pettersson is in the corner and he comes out right in front of the net and wraps it in far side. It's the good old wraparound, pseudo quasi wraparound, because it's not really a wraparound kind of goal. Pettersson forces it right through. You can see him celebrating. He's hyped up, and that's his 13th goal in the season. He's got himself, what, a point per game now in his last 10? So, Ilias Pettersson, ladies and gentlemen, he's gone out there and started getting himself back up on the score sheet. Then, give it another minute. Luke Shen at the blue line, who just rips one towards the net. It goes off of Casey Sezikis and in... And that's it. The Vancouver Canucks don't score any more goals after that. It ends off 6-3 because there's a Casey Sezikis pass that finds the tape of Matt Martin. He scores, yada, yada, yada. That's it. But, like, after this sequence where Pedersen and Shen got their goals, the Vancouver Canucks just took complete control over the game. Every chance, every shot, the crowd oohed and odd like no tomorrow, and you could feel the energy in the building, the Canucks players hanging on to that. The end of the second period saw itself a really long shift for Andy Green, who stayed on for like three minutes of game time straight because the Islanders just couldn't take control and bring it out of the zone. It's the second period, so it's the long change over here. Vancouver did such a good job at keeping the puck on the New York Islanders' half of the ice. They did not bring it back once. And there were chances in front. JT Miller had a point-blank shot. Tyler Myers had an opportunity to shoot it on. Connor Garland, of course, controlling it along the half boards. He made things interesting. And the Vancouver Canucks showed off against a very bad Islanders team that they had life. But that life sort of dwindled away in the third period where you started to see, like at the very beginning, Pedersen and Garland and all them going out there with their shifts and taking shots and all that, and every shot felt like it could have been a goal. But towards the middle-ish part of the third, you could really start to see the Canucks kind of fatiguing themselves. Like, I don't know if it was the back-to-back -back or because they expended so much energy earlier on, but like, this team was struggling to break the puck out of their own zone towards the halfway-ish mark of the third period, and that's not really all too faithful when you're talking about a team that's down two goals in a hockey game with 20 minutes to go, and they're not able to get it done. They can't solve Sorokin eventually, as we said. It's a another goal from the Islanders. This one's pretty bad, too. The Canucks get caught on a two-on-one. Tyler Myers gets stick-lifted by Sezikis, and Sezikis steals it away. Myers sprawls out. He sends it in front for Martin, who shoots it and scores it. That's it. Thatcher Demko allows one goal and 15 shots a game, so pretty good for him. But still, Yaroslav Halak going out there, costing the Vancouver Canucks an extra million on their salary cap because of his performance here today. I can't believe the guy let in five goals on 12 shots. Like, hi yeah, yeah. When it was 5 nothing New York, the shots were 12-4 to four for New York. Vancouver had four shots, the Islanders had five goals. Again, I don't like blaming the goaltenders, but it's tough to back up the goaltender when you let in five goals in a period, dude. So, either way, talk to me in the comments what do you think about the Vancouver Canucks and this game over here. One more thing, though, before we end off the video. Cam Granado. She's being hired as another assistant GM, it appears, by the Vancouver Canucks. She was formerly with the Seattle Kraken as a part of their coaching staff. Cami Granato, as everybody kind of knows, very decorated hockey player. She's in the Hockey Hall of Fame. She's got gold medals at the Olympics, at the World Championships, at the Four Nations Cup. Very smart hockey mind. She's married to Ray Ferraro. It's going to be awesome seeing another assistant GM here for the Vancouver Canucks because... Admittedly, things kind of felt sort of understaffed the entire Benning era. Like, we knew Weissbrod was here, but that was about it. So, Castonge, Granado, Alvin, Rutherford, it's a good squad the Canucks are assembling here. I really do like it. So, talk to me in the comments as well. What do you think about Granado likely being hired soon? Or, she's probably already hired. It's just the Canucks need to formally announce it, or formally, formally announce it. I hope you enjoyed this with Charles 99. And. Bye.